Hello. So I have had four mothers in my life and I've already given you a story about two of them so far. Uh, if you have not watched, you can go back and uh, watch those videos. Today is a story about my third mother and uh, kids, this is a story of how I met your second grandmother and if it, this is my wife watching, this is a story of how I met your mother. Welcome. of this story is back in 1993 1993 is when I lost my biological mother and it's when my life took a turn but I find I find saying such story being good because one day my children will sit and watch this and really understand where their father their father has come from so I'm hoping also this is a story to encourage some of you who have lost loved ones and have felt that life is no longer worth living and maybe I'm here to encourage you that uh, life continues and sometimes it might take also a good turn even when you have had such a challenging beginning so when I lost my mom and uh, back then I don't think the children had really a good say into what happens to themselves when the parent is no longer there. Remember, I didn't have a dad, so I was an orphan who, who really did not know what was happening in their lives. And uh, I remember there was a meeting after the funeral of the extended family, and they decided who was to take me and my brother. And we were separated again because each auntie took one of the kids. And a few months on, I struggled. I struggled to cope. I struggled to, to really blend in in the new family that I had been put into. And uh, I was ready to start life on the streets. So I remember I went to where we used to stay. I packed my things in a, in a plastic bag. And uh, I remember that day I had made up my mind that I was to start my life in the streets. But also, uh, there's this auntie of mine that I really loved. And I, my heart really used to warm up to her. And that is my Aunt Mary. So I told myself, I'll go and present my case to him, to her. If she takes me, well and good. If she doesn't, then that is me as a chokora. That is me as a street kid. So one afternoon, I packed everything and I went to her and I told her, and I think that is, that is my first interview ever. An interview that I called, that I invited myself. I think in my life I've had only three interviews. That was the first one. And when I went to her, I told her, Auntie, it's you either take me in or me, I'm going to be a street child straight to her face and I didn't know what she would do and she told me why would you want that I just told her that is what I want in my life and she didn't argue about it she didn't tell me go go home and I'll talk to your auntie and uh, we'll see what to do she just told me okay let's go home and that is how I got adopted by my aunt Mary that is how I met my third mother. And that is how my journey to me took a good twist. After that loss of a loved one, she took me in and she understood me. And how I came to know that it was not just something out of the blues is after taking me, she went another step further and went for my brother. Remember my brother had gone with another aunt and she told them that uh, she doesn't see it fit separating these two boys and they rather stay together. Now remember I'm being taken in by a single mother. She had lost her husband around 
three years before that, before I lost my mom. And she had four children. So I was not going to somebody who was very comfortable with her own life. She had a good reason why she would not have taken us in, me and my brother, but she did not look at that. And she was not that rich to say that, that she, she knew she would make it. So to me, she just t took a leap of faith and maybe prayed to God and asked him to show him the way. And uh, that is how I was taken in by my auntie, Mama Zipporah, the angel in my life, my mother to date. And I, I, look, I look back onto what I'm about to share with you today and find it is just another miracle in my life. So she took me in, she took my brother in. She did not change us from the school that we are going to, that was St. Patrick's Primary. And uh, we started our life. It was still tough for me because I remember at one time I would just sit in class and then tears would just start rolling from my, from my eyes. I don't know, maybe, maybe my tears were too close to my butt. My life wasn't that easy, but I was going into a setting that had good children and those ones became now my new brothers and new sister. I didn't have a sister before. And uh, I was brought in. I met Steve. Steve is the eldest. Uh, then there's Zipporah. Then there's Kim, very good friend to me to date. And uh, James, who turned out to be my best friend. So those were, those are my new brothers and sisters. Even to date, when we talk with them, we talk at that at that level they took me in they never showed any any, any you know any division and uh, going forward from then on i never i never lacked anything to eat i never lacked anything to drink somewhere where to sleep everything was provided for she taught me even how to be grounded in the faith because she took me to church, the church that she was going to, PCEA, Makongeni Church, yeah, PCEA Makongeni Church. And other than that, she introduced me also to another program called the Brigade. Those, those people who, who go to PCEA can, can, can attest about the Brigade. The Brigade program is for young children and every Saturday we would go and be taught stuff about life and be taught about how to be a good man and a, or a good woman for that case and we would also play football and I loved that so she taught me also how to pray every day she would pray every day and there's one thing that she used to repeat like every day that has touched me to date so I remember I remember I told you that she was not that rich so it doesn't mean that she had a lot of food but whenever I would start eating my ugali I would finish up faster than her because I knew that once she has seen that I have finished, she would add me hers. So every day she would ask me, Sam, are you, are you full? And I would, I, would, I would not say no, but she would see from my face and she would cut her ugali and put it in my plate. Every day, every day we had food. She, she used to spare some for me. Remember now, in this family of six, I was the youngest, so like I was the last born, so I think I got those privileges. And all along I thought it's because she was so full. Only now that I'm a parent, I know that she was even sacrificing herself, even her own food, for me to be satisfied. And come class 8, now remember now it's from 1993 all the way to class 8. Now, the other good thing with this family that I went into is that... Uh, she really cared about education and she encouraged her children and everybody that was under her roof to read hard, to work hard, to study hard. And that, that came into me because when I was coming into that family, I was just an average student in school. I was in class three and I was just the average. And uh, from staying there, being encouraged to read harder, come class eight, we did our exams and I remember I had gone for rites of passage to my grandmother's place. And she and my grandpa went for the results. I never, I never went to, to, to check whether I had passed my KCPE. But my grandpa came one day and told me, Hey Sam, you did good. You, had, you have passed. You, you can go now to a good secondary school. And when I came back, 
I received a good welcome from my auntie. And the reason why I'm sharing this is how I joined my high school. Again, it was another weird scenario because one day she, I had passed, yes, I'd been called to a school that she did not regard as a good level. Then again, my best friend in primary school had also been called to the same school. That was, I think, Kirwara, Kirwara, Kirwara High School or Kirwara Secondary School. And she had told me that you're not going to go to the same school with your best friend because you're not going to learn anything. So she, she took me somewhere in Kandara. And one day, she woke up and took the box. I had not done even the interview. This is the second interview now. <laughs> Remember I told you I've done only three interviews in my life. And she took that box of mine, big one, and she put it on her back. And she told me, let's go. And where, when we reached a place called, uh, near Kandara, a, a school called Naro High School, uh, we, we alighted from the, from, from the Matatu that we are using, and we walked for over five kilometers. That, that box was on her back throughout because I was, I was too tiny, I was skinny, I didn't have the muscle to help her. But she carried that bag up to there and when we, when we, met, the, when we met the principal, I remember she told, she told him that I brought this boy here because he's, he, he's, he's good. He had not reached the mark that you want but I want you to take him in. And the principal did the interview to me. And he told me that he does not admit boys from towns because they, all they do is bring bang and bring cigarettes to and bring drugs to his school. But he said because he respected my mother to her now, although now the, my auntie had told, told him about my scenario, but she, he said that I respect her so much. But if I find you with a hint of doubt, I will not have you in this school. And that is how I got admitted. I had even gone with the shot that I was using in my primary school and uh, I started my life in secondary school. So that is 1999, 1999 is when I started my secondary school. And all along my auntie never, never really, I don't think she had the time to come for the, for the, for the visiting days. But every time I would go home, the first thing would be, hey Sam, don't you eat, because I was very tiny. and. Four years passed very quickly and uh, I remember when we were almost doing our exams, 2002, one day from class I was called and I was told that your auntie wants to see you. Then I was like, huh? why, why would she come? It's not visiting day, she either way she doesn't come, what's happening? So I was very worried but when I went she told me I just came because I know that you are about to start your KCSC, that is your final year a secondary school final year exam and I want you to concentrate and pass because I want you to go to the university. So deep inside I knew I, I, cannot, I cannot go to university, you cannot even afford it. I can see how you have struggled to even, meet, even take me through these four years but I told her I'll do my best. But just by her coming to me was very touching because it meant that she really cared about my future and she wanted me to to exam. So the exams came. I remember the principal called me and told me, you can see what your auntie, the sacrifice your auntie is doing. And, she, and you have never been sent home because of school fees. Don't let her down. So I really worked hard. And uh, again, just like KCP, I never went for my, for my results. It's her who, who inquired and she told me, you need to go and see how much you scored. And I realized that she was very happy. So I knew something good had happened. So when I went there, I realized that I had scored a B plus. And a B plus was a good, a good grade for back then, for the people who wanted to go to the university. So when I came back and I gave her the report, it was just like a confirmation to her because she had inquired. And I remember she bought a big soda for me. So those people who have come from my generation, you know, you know back then, sodas was not just for anyone. Uh, when somebody buys you a soda, it's either they are very rich or they are very proud of you. And I took that soda with all, all that, you know. Yes, I made it. I made her proud. And uh, fast forward, she, I went, I went to campus. Now, going to campus was another problem, by the way, because remember, by that time she's becoming older, 
she was not that active uh, in terms of going to going to the market because she was she used to sell cereals so i knew it would be hard but she looked for somebody who was already schooling with uh, university that had been called and she told me go and talk to that guy ask him how they do it and i was introduced to help help was help is that is, is, is an institution which helps needy students gives you a loan and then once you're done you can you can repay so those of you who have not paid for your help loan just pay because <laughs> it is vital to help some people who do not have anything i think i don't think i i, I don't know how far i would have gone without that help so I went and I, I, I went to help, I give them my case and they give me the minimum, the minimum they offer. And one day a lady calls me from help and tells me, hey, can you come to our offices? And I went and believe it or not, somebody who was a stranger to me, she told me the reason why you have not gotten the full, the full, the full loan that you can get so that you can survive in, 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 in campus is because you have not filled your forms well. So again, to me, that was another miracle because I feel that and, and the, full, the full loan was released to me. So I remember when I left home, I, and my auntie gave me 700 shillings. I'll never forget because that's what she had. And she told me, just go and work hard. She didn't know how I was, about, I was supposed to survive. I did not want to stress her with, with telling her what can this do to me. But that's how I started my campus life. That is 2005 all the way to 2008 so you can see she has given me the fear to go come 2008 when she came to time for graduation again she she came back and i remember we were to graduate on the 19th 19th of december on the 18th she called me on that time now we had forms so she told me i know you're about to graduate and you have done me proud keep it up Thank you so much for at least making our name be, be known. And I was very okay with just with that because I know some other people, their families were to come and join them for the graduation. But for me, what my auntie had done so far was nothing short of just exponential. So I did not expect that that much after that. Now, that was 18th. On the 19th, that is the next day, during the day of graduation, at around 9, 9 a.m. in the morning, she calls me again and she tells me, Hey Sam, where are you? I told her I'm getting ready to go to the graduation square. And uh, it has been a good, it, has, it, it, is, it is a good occasion. And she told me, you know what? Uh, I'm already there. I'm already waiting for you. I want to hear your name being called <laughs> uh, during graduation. And I told her, what? And I ran, I ran and I remember I went she was near the graduation, the, the administration block. And I went there and I saw her and I greeted her. And she, she just touched my heart. So we attended the graduation, which was very successful. To me, it was one of the best moments in my life, knowing that I had achieved the 844, 844 system. I fully completed it. And when we went home, the next day, she organized a party. Can you imagine? She called all her friends and all our family members so that we can enjoy together. And that to me, that, that was a very, a very good gesture from her. Like, like her feeling like she had, she had done something for her sister and she had taken care of her son to the fullest. And I was so touched by that. So she has been a rock in my life. And this video is dedicated to her. Every time I think about her, I just want to go and visit her. She's, she's just nearby. She's in Thika, near Minhuiri. So that is around 45 minutes, uh, 45 minutes drive. But today I wanted to share the story about how I met my third mother. The mother who, has, who, has, who, ha, who, didn't, who, didn't, who didn't hold back when she came to supporting me and showing me the way. And even today she does so. Because I remember she, how she let me go, she, I told one day I brought her, my wife. That's the only girl I, had taken, I have taken to her. Uh, and she, she put her, her hands on our heads and she blessed us. And she blessed our family. And even to date my children call her Shosho because in their heads they know that that is my biological mother. 
Actually, whenever I go to visit home and some people are there, they know that this is the last one of this household. And other than thanking her, I would also want to thank her children, my brothers and my sister, because if they would not have taken us in the way they did, I think my life would have been harder there. But even to date, I made, I, I made, a, I made a good larger family. From a family of two boys to a family of around six of us or seven of us. But I've learned a lot from my auntie. She's my mom, she's my rock. She stands with me in everything that I do. And she's always there to give me any support that I want. I don't want to belabor the point, but those of you who have met her know that she's an angel. And I always pray to God that God gives her a long life, very long. Old, old age where even my children's children can meet her. I would want to preach her to the world because I've met many pastors. I've met many people who say that they are good. She didn't have to tell me she's good. I just looked at her actions, and the things that she, that she has done to others, not just me. She helps a lot. And she doesn't brag about it. She doesn't tell people about it. Sometimes I feel the world should know her, but I don't know how else I can, I can make the world know her. But the only way I can do so is just to show appreciation to her. Every Mother's Day I have to call her and tell her, you are my mom, and I value you so much, and God bless you. So that is the end of my story. Kids, that's how I met your grandmother. Edna, that is how I met your mother. And to the whole world, that is how I met an angel that has stood with me to date. That is the angel that God has put in my life. And may God bless you and tea. Everything that you do and the things and everything that your hands put, may it turn to gold. And may God bless you so much. And may he give you the blessings that he has ordained for the saints. Because you are a saint in my life. God bless you guys. Keep watching, subscribe, and value those people who have taken care of you. If you have a mother there, if you have a guardian there, they have really done a lot to make you be who you are. I know maybe it might not be what you wanted, but they have they, our, our parents do their best to give us the best of life. So appreciate them. And whenever you are able, go and see them. Go and show them love. If you guys hug, go and hug them. That is all they want from me. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you.